to try and look at it retrospectively, I was frustrated because it, the way he used to interrupt as well, it didn't facilitate a good discussion. Also, his dismissiveness maybe could have brought aspects out of me that maybe I should have been a bit more calm about. In looking back, in some cases, I should have been harsher as well, to be honest. Like the way he talked about Islamic morality, Islamic law. He didn't even read a book on Islamic law. And I, I remember I mentioned it. I said, I've, I've read atheist literature. You haven't read one book on Islam. I'm here to learn. No, you're not here to learn because you would have at least done your homework. How can you make a judgment about a legal theory that exists, that has existed for over a thousand years, that has facilitated some great things for humanity collectively, and you just like, it was this ridiculous Fox News narrative attitude. That for me was like, and that's what's interesting because I wanted to go down the moral ontology argument. That if you believe in some objective moral truths and objectivity here from a moral perspective means that the moral value is outside of the independent mind, uh, so it's independent of, of, of the mind and it's independent of, of emotions. And therefore you ask the question, well, if that's the case, then where did it come from? And what explains the fact that it's independent of the human mind and human emotions? So these are ontological questions. I wanted to go into the argument to show, well, if you believe in some objective truths, like the way you're coming across and you have to believe in God's existence. But then he, and that's why I asked the question about incest. People actually feel, I think even to this day, that I wanted to set him up. I'm telling you, I did not want to set him up. I just wanted to ask a question, uh, ask that type of question, because I assumed that he would have been like, this is objectively wrong. And I would have anchored off that to say to him, well, how do you justify that objectivity? That the fact that you believe in, 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 in objective moral values, that's what I wanted to do. But then he just shot himself in the foot. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't think it's, a, I don't, I, it's very hard to say it's objectively morally wrong. And then you had like gasps, right? Uh, yeah, so... which, which, were, which, were quite, which were quite amusing. Um, and, and this is something that, to my own detriment, perhaps, that I wanted to bring up because I, 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 I want to be transparent with you yeah, sure. and with the audience. And it isn't exactly to my advantage that I bring this up. But, I mean, I'm, I'm exactly... I don't think Krauss is is a uh, is it right a moral realist where where he would you know or in some sense believe that there is something innately wrong with that. I, I don't think that he does from what I've seen. Um, so he's of that position that it is subjective. Um, and I and I do and I do follow that idea. I'm just you know as much as I might want it to be true, right? I, I just I'm not convinced by that and. And the question, you know, yeah, sure, you could you could suggest that it was a loaded question, and maybe it was, you know, maybe maybe we can both agree and say maybe um, you you could say that. But at the end of the day, isn't that the point of the question? It's to show that, you know, the, the presumption behind his 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 moral um, just uh, his moral arguments against uh, Islam, for example, like uh, not agreeing with I don't know the you know the laws. As you were kind of implying, to to even talk about that, you have to have some kind of foundation uh, for your morals to then critique a moral system, right? Agreed. And and and, and, and yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah, if he's consistent with his the see because the way he was coming across as an uh, he he adopts uh, more realism. He's a more realist. That's that's how he's coming across. The way you're pointing the finger, your psychology, your behavior is. This is wrong objectively. Mm. If I, if he's not a moral realist and he doesn't believe in objective moral values, fair enough. But therefore, he has a particular understanding of how he formulates uh, ethical rules. Okay. Well, what are they? So if he's an ethical hedonist or consequentialist or whatever, then that means it's about the kind of consequences or it increases well-being and it decreases suffering. Okay. Well, then at least come across that way. That's the point. Mm. We need to be consistent yep. with our moral philosophy. If you're pointing the finger, this is all backward. Okay. And that's why even asking the question and using an argument to say, well, if you believe in objective moral truths, then therefore God must exist. And if you don't believe in them, then the, then after it's a double-edged sword because the argument is quite powerful because the, the, the argument against the moral argument could be, well, I don't accept your axiom, they're objective moral truths. Aha, well done. Well, just stop pointing the fingers if there are. That's the point. And that's yeah. and that's yeah. why that's the inconsistency of the new atheist movement at that time, the inconsistency of Krauss. You're pointing the finger in such a, a more realist, objective way. But in reality, this is all about you have your own maybe kind of, uh, normative ethical theory here or you're, you know, you, you don't believe 
the ontology, more, more ontology, you don't believe in the objective, um, objective moral, moral values. So therefore, you know, say he's not a, a moral realist. So the way he formulates ethical rules, um, which is an epistemic question now, would be based upon, you know, outweighing the suffering and the harm or the well-being yeah. and the suffering or whatever. Which, which, I'm not there are, which there are some established, for example, I, I would consider myself at the very moment, I try and use, so basically my approach is looking at what's worked in history and the consequences of it and uh, <clears throat> using utilitarianism and, of course, consequentialism from that first thing. So basically, I personally would, if, if I was crossed there, I'd say, well, I think looking into history, we can kind of tell what's worked and what hasn't for people and, you know, politically, economically, socially. Um, and hey, look, John Stuart Mill and, and, and uh, you know, site consequentialism and, and things like that. And but that isn't what he did. Right. That's he he point. was pointing That's the finger. He, he was he was doing a Hitchens esque rhetorical play, um, which, hey, look, it's it's nice. It's, it's really fun. The entire, the, you know, his his performance and yours, of course, at the time, it's really fun. But, but the question is, OK, but but what's the point behind what you're saying? And what Krauss was saying in that situation was it, it was missing um, its actual foundation there, because why couldn't he have just said, hey, look, uh, consequentialism, utilitarianism. What, what do we think about that? How maybe he's going to argue for that? But he didn't. And. It, because he, his, 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 he was a bit of an ideologue, I guess, on that issue. And even when it comes to like women, the the uh, clothing in the Islamic tradition and what, how women must dress and how men must dress, I don't think he would have had even an argument to show why he think that is that's morally wrong. I mean, what I mean, yeah. how, what, what could he come up with? You know, then because then, because because and the reason he probably didn't want to do that, obviously, it's easy to say in retrospect, but it would be because it would end up being a rational discussion on the consequences of particular clothing. Um, and then that would have diminished his kind of whole moral outlook, the way he was presenting himself in the debate that this is wrong, this is barbaric, this is backward, this is irrational. You know, fine, if you think it's irrational, but at least explain why you think it's irrational, yeah? Exactly. But yeah, I mean, yeah. so from that point of view, that's again another problem. So look, it would be great to have another discussion with him or someone like him, but in a way that we're both sincere to the discussion and we really just have a really good conversation about unpacking certain ideas because a lot of potential was missed. That's the problem here as well. And and, and that gets me a little bit in life in general when someone has potential and they're not using it fully. It's, it's, it's I, I can't even rationalize it. It's just intuitively upsetting. I do that with myself, right? Like, you know, when you go into the gym, you just want to try your best, max it out. You know, even if you're tired, do your best in your context. At least, you know, mm. you're you're expressing the gifts that God has given you, right? It's, it's a, for me, it's a form of gratitude. Just try it. Fine, you'll fail. Who cares? But do it. Try and be the best version you can be in your particular context. You know, even if you have, even if you're tired or even if you have bad genetics or even if you, uh, you know, have a bad social upbringing. Fine, that's part of your context. Try your best in that context. And for me, when people don't do that, it's a bit, you know, uh, frustrating, and I and obviously I don't try and judge other people. It's more more for myself, but nevertheless, for this discussion, there's so much more that could have been done, uh, and on so many different issues concerning the philosophy of science, <clears throat> concerning ethics, concerning religion, concerning concept of worship, concept of God. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and we learn, isn't it? So hopefully, maybe a future debate will come up, and it will be another positive one in terms of the hits that's had online yeah. this is nearly five million views i think the most watched discussion um, uh, between an atheist and a muslim on the topic of islam or atheism and yeah and, and there should be there should be more in the future but i think people now have moved away from those type of debates and i think the likes of yourself and others are actually you know a very positive sign because now about having a conversation uh, and even if it is a debate, then it, at least it would be a conversational debate, if that makes sense. That you're yeah. trying to get the, you're trying to get the best out of each other in order to unpack certain ideas in order for, you know, the truth to prevail.